conventional vehicle development, was mainly about designing and testing mechanical and electromechanical components. But, over the last decades, cars have become complex systems of EE systems, electrical and electronic systems, and electronics and software development, have been integrated into automotive development processes. In very simple terms, an electronic vehicle function, is always realized by an actuator, that for example moves, heats up, illuminates, or displays something, according to input generated by a sensor, or given by a human user, and controlled by a software program, that is embedded in an ECU. Automotive VE systems, are divided into clusters of related functions, so-called vehicle domains. The following list represents a domain structure that is widely used in the automotive industry. OEMs introduced systems engineering as a sustainable approach to developing reliable EE systems as part of the PEP. The International Council on Systems Engineering INGOS, defines system engineering as an interdisciplinary means to enable the realization of successful systems by early focus on customer needs, documenting requirements, design synthesis, and system validation. System design, starts with the creation of an architecture derived top-down, from the specified requirements. While the requirements specification, describes what the vehicle's EE system should do, the system architecture describes how the system should do it, both on a logical, functional and a technical level. As it defines the vehicle's interface, to components that are usually developed and manufactured by suppliers, Creation of the system architecture is a core competency of an automotive OEM, or a highly specialized development partner. The system level requirements, are decomposed into sub-functions, which together with their internal and external interfaces, represent the logical system architecture. While the internal interfaces, Describe the required communication lines between the distinct subsystems. The external interfaces describe inputs from and outputs to the system's environment, especially the driver and passengers. The logical system architecture is represented by a block diagram in which each subfunction is represented by one block. In the next step, the so-called partitioning process, the functions of the logical system architecture, are mapped to the realizable elements of the technical system architecture, distinct ECUs, sensors, actuators, bus systems, and application programs. The mapping of software elements, to distinct hardware elements, is referred to as deployment. In parallel to the distribution of functions, to specific hardware and software components, creation of the technical system structure, also includes the specification of the external bus systems, used for inter-ECU communication. A bus system is specified by the protocol, the technical properties of the carrier, for example cable, and the topology, according to which the distinct ECUs are interlinked. Which bus system is the most suitable? depends on the domain's prevailing requirements, 
regarding speed, volume and reliability of data transfer. In the context of EE systems development, component development, denotes the design of the distinct ECUs, and other EE elements, sensors, actuators etc., and validation of the resulting subsystem. Middleware, is the critical prerequisite, for exchangeability of software and hardware components, among model lines, OEMs and suppliers. Here, the AutoSAR runtime environment, has become an automotive industry standard. By specifying interfaces and their communication mechanisms, the application programs, are decoupled from the underlying hardware and basic software, enabling the realization of standard library functions. Design of the ECU hardware, includes dimensioning and selection of the required electronic component parts, circuit design, PCB layout, specification and placement of the required interfaces, and design of appropriate component housing. The next step in the e-component design, is testing of the ECU, 
with the embedded application software. To allow parallel development of the ECU, and its peripheral components, these tests are carried out in hill test rigs, which electronically emulate the ECU's interface. At the beginning of this process, each component to design COC wishes to be a part of the vehicle's EE system must be registered for system integration. After being pre-qualified by the COC and handed over to the system's integration department, the respective component is under the strict change control of the system integration process, where it is evaluated as part of a subsystem or complete vehicle system. Problems found during the subsystem tests are fed back to and subsequently addressed by the design CEOCs until the subsystem under test is validated. After the subsystems have been separately built, tested and validated, they are consecutively integrated to create the complete vehicle EE system. The distinct subsystems are physically and functionally linked together to test their correct interaction and fulfillment of the system level functions. As a first step, all of a vehicle's EE components are connected and laid out in a stationary lab car. At the end of the systems engineering process, systems integration releases a defined and verified configuration of the complete vehicle EE system, a so-called integration level. <laughs> 